questions. I want to thank you for attending What Makes a Great Website. Uh, today, I want to briefly go over a couple of the SCORE slides, introduce SCORE, and then we'll get right into this presentation. This is a very popular webinar, uh, and I'll go over some of the housekeeping, how we're going to organize this for you. So SCORE, uh, we, we want to thank uh, Union Bank and everything that they've done for a big sponsor for SCORE. And we also want to uh, let you know SCORE was founded in 1964, nonprofit resource partner, part of the uh, Small Business Administration. Since 64, SCORE has helped over 11 million businesses. Last year, at SCORE in Orange County helped uh, lots of new businesses, helped start 333 new businesses, over 7,200 workshops, and 3,800 mentoring sessions. Uh, there is free mentoring available with SCORE. I highly recommend it. I've been speaking for SCORE once a month for about 10 years. I don't work for SCORE. I have my own uh, marketing agency, digital marketing agency. But take advantage uh, of SCORE mentoring. There's a lot of great uh, executives that will help you with your business. It's a free resource, and I highly recommend it not only the workshops, but also the free mentoring. You can sign up for that. And you can call uh, the number here on the screen. You can go to orangecountyscore.org and you can browse the mentor profiles. Again, highly recommend you take advantage of uh, the SCORE uh, intellectual and practical help that can help you with your small business. Highly recommend it. Okay, let's get started here. We have a lot of people at this webinar. I really appreciate you taking the time to attend this. I've, I've given this seminar many times live and in person. This is the first time I've done this one in a webinar format, so this is going to be fun. What makes a great website? Uh, you'll, many of you will remember the Kevin Costner movie, uh, Field of Dreams. In that movie, it was basically build it and they will come. He builds the baseball field and the players will come. Well, with a website, that's not the case. Just because you build a website and you put it up does not mean it's going to, people are gonna come, you're gonna get lots of visitors, lots of traffic. It's not magical. You have to do something to get visitors to your website. <clears throat> Excuse me, we're gonna talk about that this morning. Both from an organic standpoint and an advertising standpoint, how do you get traffic and what makes a great website? Uh, Google doesn't care about pretty. Google doesn't really care about pictures. Most search, search engines aren't focused on pretty and colors and what looks great. Most search, search engine, engines are looking for the basic structure and the user, uh, the user experience, the user friendly, the UX, the customer experience, the user experience of how especially your home page is designed. And that's what I'm gonna be focusing on. The, the, the customer experience, the user experience, things that go beyond color, go beyond pretty, and getting into the nuggets and the content of what makes an effective website. Pretty is good, but like I said, Google doesn't really care about pretty. There are things more, now I'm not saying you want an ugly website, of course not. You want a professional, nice looking website. But there's far more to the depth of a website than just making it look good. And, and so I'm gonna be, be covering today what makes a good website. Today's journey, here we go. Uh, uh, chat and questions are gonna be after the critiques. I'm gonna, after I present, I'm gonna be doing some website critiques. I want some of you, go ahead and send me your website URLs. I'll try to get to three to five of those website URLs and I'm gonna do an actual critique of the home pages after we're done here. People love that, that's one of the funnest things about this, I'm gonna actually critique some home pages. So some of you please send me uh, your URLs and I'll take a look at your website live this morning, it'll be fun. <clears throat> uh, as I said, chat me your website domains. Uh, I'm gonna be giving away two free signed copies of my book, Winning the Battle for Attention, Internet Marketing for Small Business. Uh, SCORE is gonna give me just two random names and two of, two of you lucky individuals are gonna get a signed copy 
of my book. It is available on Amazon and my website, and it's been very popular, and it gives you a lot of good information on, you know, what makes a good website. Some of the material this morning that I'm covering is in there, but not all of it. But it has been very popular and very effective, and I always try to give away a couple free copies of that when I present for SCORE. I also have a, email, a monthly email marketing newsletter. I encourage you to sign up for that. I don't promote uh, heavy, if at all, in that newsletter. It's just free value-oriented information. You can sign up for that on my website, atkinsmarketingsolutions.com. And also, I have a recent blog post on lead generation, 10 tips for lead generation follow-up that was recently posted on my website. I highly recommend you uh, look at that. It'll be very effective. And plus, I said there's a lot of free, good marketing information. I have th over 330 blog posts on my website. A lot of good information for you. Okay, let's talk websites. If you want to get a hold of me, you can reach me at Stu at AtkinsMarketingSolutions.com. There's my Facebook, my Twitter, and my LinkedIn. You're welcome to connect with me if you so choose. Let me briefly go over my bio. <clears throat> uh, uh, my company, Atkins Marketing Solutions, was founded in 2008. I have over 30 years marketing experience. I work for a lot of the big brands I, uh, prior to starting my own uh, marketing agency, digital marketing agency. I worked at Toshiba America Information Systems for uh, roughly nine years. Uh, I worked in the computer systems division, working with some of 30 odd different uh, laptop computers that Toshiba was releasing at the time, a combination of technical support and marketing at Toshiba America Information Systems. Then I worked in, at uh, Kingston Technology, uh, Orange County's largest privately held company, started in two, 1987 with $4,000 by John Tu and David Sun. Now it's over $10 billion in sales. I worked as a marketing analyst, I did some sales, I did product management, worked with IBM, worked with Microsoft, worked with Rambus, worked with Kodak back when it existed, worked with a lot of great companies, had a great experience at Kingston Technology. Uh, then, in two, then in 2008, uh, at the end of my corporate career, after working with, for some smaller semiconductor companies, I, were, I grew up in the PC industry basically, went through a couple of layoffs, decided I've been doing marketing for everybody else, started my own company, Atkins Marketing Solutions in 2008. I reinvented myself, also went back into, into teaching. Uh, I'm a professor at uh, Cal State Fullerton, the largest school of business in California, the fifth largest in the United States. A lot of people don't know that. I've scaled back my teaching considerably. I'm an adjunct professor. I teach one class a semester now, internet marketing strategy. I can say if there's any Titans out there in the audience, go Titans. Titans reach higher. Go Titans. Uh, I consider myself a search specialist, uh, search engine marketing. I love it, especially pay-per-click advertising. And I'll talk a little bit about that also and how it gets traffic to your website. I'm an author, author of two books, one book on small business marketing, one on internet marketing. And like I said, I'm a professor. I've worked with over 250 small businesses, close to 300 now since I've started my agency in 2008. I love working with the small business community. It's the driving force of the US economy and much of the global economy now. Small businesses rock and it's really uh, the sweet spot of economic growth. And, and we're in a tough time right now, but small businesses are gonna get through this and uh, the whole COVID environment is tough. So you're smart coming to this webinar to get some tips to work on your website during this time. I have 10 years of pay-per-click experience. That's really the niche focus of my agency, but I'm gonna talk about organic search and paid search and how to get traffic to your website, both from a free standpoint, a pay standpoint, but especially what makes the structure of a good website. Okay, is your website lonely? Some of your websites are lonely. And the reason some of your websites are lonely is simply because they're not getting the traffic they need. That lo a lonely website is not getting relevant, specific traffic on a regular basis. And there's reasons for that. You don't want your website to be lonely. 
You want the traffic to increase on your website. You want your website to feel the love of visitors, but not just random visitors. You want visitors that are focused on the topic and the focus and the structure and the products of the services relative to your business. So we don't want to have lonely websites. And hopefully as a result of you applying some of the things I'm going to talk about today, your websites are going to be feeling more of the love because they're getting more of the traffic. So I'm going to go through a whole series of tips of what makes a great website. One of the first tips, a great website applies and thinks UX and CX. And you say, Stu, what do you mean UX and CX? UX is usability. The world's foremost uh, website usability expert is named Jakob Nielsen. I'm going to give you his website in a little bit. He's got about 113 prin principles of website usability. Some of the principles I'm going to talk about this morning cover what makes a good website from a usability standpoint. Usability, when someone comes to your home page, for example, the person comes to the page, things make sense. It's easy to navigate. There's no confusion. There's not too much text. It's focused and they know where to go and what they can get and there's not any confusion. So UX refers to usability. It goes even beyond just website friendliness, but does the page make sense? Can they navigate without confusion and get what they want and go where they want? CX is customer experience. Usability and customer experience go together. If your website has a frustrating design and creates a poor usability experience, it translates into a very negative customer experience. You have about five to eight seconds to capture the attention of someone coming to your homepage. If you cannot capture that attention, you're gonna lose that visitor and they may never leave. And what's scary is they may never come back to your website again. Why? Because there's plenty of other websites out there. You want to make sure when they hit that home page, you grab their attention, it makes sense, it's cogent, and they can understand what you're trying to communicate. Have you ever been to a website home page and for the life of you have no idea what the company even does? You move on. So user experience and customer experience is the foundation of a great website. Okay. A great website has a laser focused objective. When someone comes to your homepage, you want to ask the question, what do you want them to do? What's the objective? What's the focus? You don't just want to make it pretty and fun and hip and cool and have a video flashing everywhere and slider bars going everywhere. You, what's the focus? Good marketing is a verb, it's not a noun. You want them to do something. What's the one thing you want them to do when they get to your homepage? What's the one thing you want them to do when they get your, to your About Us page? What's the one thing you want them to do or know when they get to your product page? So, so you, want, you want to have a laser-focused objective. What do you want to accomplish with your website? Now, an objective is much more fo focused than a goal. A goal is more of a broad, long-term look. An objective is accomplishment. What do you want them to do? What do you want them to accomplish by getting to your website? Your website may be information-based. It may be e-commerce-based. It is, could be service-based. It really varies. What's the objective? Ask yourself that question. A lot of times we throw up a website and don't even know what, what the objective is. Now, now What's a good website about? What's a website about? Is it about, who's, who's it about? Is it about you? Is it about them? A good website is about them, not you. Way too many co companies focused on, on what they're about rather than the visitor. A good website is about them, the customer, not you. Try to think in the language, in the brain, in the needs, in the wants of who's coming to your site. That person coming to your site is there for a reason. They have a problem and hopefully you have a solution. So your website is about them, it's not you. 
think about the visitor and don't just try to tell via an Encyclia Britannica brain dump the whole history of your life and business on one page in a nine point font. It doesn't work. Think about them, not you. Put yourself in their digital shoes, not yours. Now this picture here is one of the illustrations in my book, Winning the Battle for Attention. And I tried to, my, the, the illustrator that did my illustrations is a former Disney illustrator. And I said, Jamie, I said, I want an illustration that connects with real estate. And I, I, I want a street on a real estate and uh, I, I want these screens because the most, let me ask you a question. What's the most expensive real estate in the world? Where is it? Some of you are saying New York. Some of you are saying Laguna Beach. Some of you are saying San Francisco. Well, I got news for you. The most expensive real estate in the world are the screens of our lives. Millions of dollars goes through these mobile screens and your desktop and laptop screens every minute. So the most expensive real estate in the world is the digital real, real estate of the screens of our mobile devices, our laptops, and our computers. And that translates into those, your website coming up on those screens. Now, Jakob Nielsen, again, he's the world's foremost usability expert, speaks all over the world, phenomenal material. He says, home pages are the most valuable real estate in the world. Millions of dollars are funneled through a space that's not even a square foot in size. Now, this is the statement I love. It's your company's face to the world. Your website for a small, tiny business or a huge business is your company's face to the world because often that's the first place someone goes to is your website. That's the first impression. That's the first perception. And marketing is all about perception and it needs to be perception connected to reality and accuracy. So it's your company's face to the world and that's why it's so important. A great website shows the company name and logo in a noticeable location. Now this may be simple and very intuitive, but you'd be surprised how many companies don't have their logo in a noticeable location. A logo is part of your branding. It's part of your perception imaging and your branding. Now, the best place for a location for a logo is in the upper left hand corner, upper left hand or middle of your home page or most of your pages, upper left hand corner. Why is that? Because I'm going to show through eye mapping and heat mapping and eye tracking and prove to you where our eyes track online. We read about 25% slower online and we don't read online, we scan online. So I'm gonna be covering some of those uh, heat mapping uh, uh, studies and showing you this. So your logo needs to be in a, a noticeable location. A great website includes a tagline that explicitly summarizes what the site or company does. Now, let me give you two examples here. In the past, Ford used to have a tagline that said, striving to make the world a better place. Now, what's wrong with that tagline? Well, it's way too general. It's way too altruistic. It doesn't really fit the focus of an automobile company. Now, Ford has since changed that, but striving to make the world a, a better place sounds like it's something for the Peace Corps and not an automotive company. The second example, global resources as a tagline, says this, product and trade information for volume buyers much more effective. Why is it much more effective? Well, do you have any confusion as to what that company does? No, they, may, they, they are focused, laser focused on product and trade information domestically and internationally for volume buyers. It's a much more specific tagline. So if you're gonna have a tagline on your website, make sure it's crystal clear as to what your company does. Now, here's an example of a former client of mine, uh, Dr. Cynthia, Cynthia Thigh. She's a Harvard-trained cardiologist in Burbank and Valencia. Now, Dr. Cynthia 
uh, is a holistic cardiologist. She works with traditional scientific medicine, but she also focuses on holistic cardiology, weight loss, the psychology, psychological aspects uh, 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 of, of cardiology, stress, et cetera, et cetera. And you can see her homepage here, holistic cardiologist near Los Angeles practices with her heart. There's no confusion, confusion as to what she does and who she is. So Dr. Cynthia here is very specific regarding to this. She has a value proposition and a benefit statement. Now, I'm gonna talk about value propositions and benefit statements in just a minute. Here's another example, and you will notice the, the logo is in the upper left-hand corner. This is a company called Associate Partners in Healthcare. Now this company focused, their, their business model is focused on patient lifts. If you have an elderly uh, parent or someone who's been in an accident, young, old, middle-aged, that needs to have lift equipment to get them in and out of a car or into bed at home, this company focuses on hand delivering these, installing them with a technician, patient lift equipment, like a Hoyer lift and an Argo lifts. And you can see very simple website, but extremely effective, both from a free organic standpoint and from a paid search standpoint. Well, and so uh, you, you can see there's nothing confusing about this page. You can notice at Associate Partners in Healthcare, we provide home lift, floor lift, and medical lift equipment for all your needs. The first sentence gets right to the point. No confusion. Very simple. You've got contact information and phone number also, and I'll talk more about this too. Very simple, deceptively simple website that's been extremely effective. Here's another example from Zero Res, the, uh, uh, the carpet cleaning company, cleans carpet without, without soap or chemicals, et cetera. You can see this website, you've got the logo in the upper left-hand corner. Uh, there's a simple call to action, schedule your cleaning, that's focused on the one thing they want the individual to do, is schedule a, a cleaning for their carpet. And you can see it's not overly burdened with too much information. The smarter way to clean carpets, get a healthier, longer lasting clean. Pretty good tagline, very specific, no confusion as to what they do. And they also clean carpet, tile and stone, area rugs and other cleaning services. So it's a good example of a very simple, clean, uh, uncluttered homepage that, that focuses on, on two calls to action, schedule your cleaning or making a phone call. Another tip here. A great website emphasizes what your site does that's valuable from the visitor's viewpoint, as well as how you differ from the competition. It's very important that you differentiate what your product or service is all about. Extremely critical. Now, I'm going to talk about this a little bit more. Now, how do you do that? A value proposition. A value proposition. By the way, I forgot to mention, I'm not going to be able to answer questions until the end of the seminar. At, at the end of this seminar, I'll do a couple of uh, website critiques from some of your URLs that you posted in the chat, and then I'll do my best to get to answer, answer questions at the end, because I've got a lot of material I want, to, I want to get through. So I'm not ignoring anybody, just an FYI on that. A value proposition is critical. Most homepages don't have two things. Number one, a value proposition, and number two, a benefit statement. Now, let me explain what a value proposition is. You say, Stu, what's a value proposition? Well, I'm gonna define it. A value proposition is the primary reason why a prospect should buy from you in one or two sentences. The top 25 to 30% of the, of the homepage should have two things. Number one, a value pro proposition, Number two, a benefit statement. So have you ever been to a website and for the life of you, you can't figure out what they do. It's very confusing, it's very frustrating, so you move on. One to two sentences, can you describe in one to two sentences why a potential visitors should engage with you, should buy from you? It's extremely important. In one sentence, I say. Now, I'll, I'll give you a break. If you can do it in two sentences, that's okay. But it, can you describe in one to two sentences why a prospect should buy your product or your service? It's not easy, but it can be done. Secondly, 
Underneath the value proposition, a good website includes a, ben a benefit statement after your value proposition. Now, a benefit statement consists of three to five bullet points, and those bullet points succinctly summarize and define what makes you unique and different. What makes, what, what can you do that your competition can't? Doesn't need to be a big paragraph. So you've got your value proposition, one to two sentences as to why someone should buy from you. Right underneath that, three to five bullet points as to, as to what are the benefits? What can you do for them? Very critical, very important. Very simple, but you need to think that through. Benefit statement defined. The benefit statement is a bulleted list of what you offer a potential customer. So sit down and think about it. What makes you unique, different, special, uh, that sets you apart from your competition? Value proposition, benefit statement. Top 25 to 30% of your homepage. Now here's an example of a benefit statement example. If you remember that company I just referred to, the home health care uh, lifting equipment. Here's their benefit statement. Now it's a little long, but, but you, you, you get to the point. They say not all medical lifting equipment and service providers are the same. We offer the following benefits. Now here's some of their benefits. Rentals or new patient lift equipment. So they've got rentals. In-home custom personal needs assessment. Hands-on equipment and usage training. Now, just those top three could be very unique differentiators. But you get the point. Tell them here's our benefits and then state the benefits very specifically. Extremely important. Another tip, a great website provides all the critical information on the top 25% of the pages I've already stated. Most individuals, it's called the top of the fold. And I say the in my book, the top of the fold is gold. The top of the fold comes from the newspaper industry. Most of us focus on that top 25 to 30% of a website page. And we don't scroll beyond that unless it's really compelling to do so. We're in a hurry. We need to get to the point. We read 25% slower online, as I mentioned. And we don't read online. We scan online. Therefore, you want to make sure all the critical information is in that top 25 to 30 percent of your of your homepage. If it's compelling, your your that page will be sticky. People will stick around. The engagement will last longer, and there are ways to increase that engagement. But it's really important, especially on your homepage, you've got everything you want to communicate simply, succinctly in that top 30 percent of the page. <clears throat> A great website uses bullet points to convey key messaging. Bullet, bullet points are very effective because we don't like to read a lot of information. Have you ever been to a homepage that has the Encyclopedia Britannica, a ton of text in a nine point font, they're trying to communicate their entire business life story on half a page and it just turns you off. So, Bullet points are a great way to summarize things. Here's some benefits of bullet points. Number one, bullet points help break up large blocks of text. Good bullet points can, what, 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 can summarize in one bullet point what you're trying to write in a whole block of text. Also, bullet points make complex content easier to grasp. Bullet points attract attention. What do you do, do when you see a bullet point on a web? If you see three or four bullet points, you go, oh, this is much easier. I don't have to take the time, the effort to, to read tons of paragraphs, tons of content. I can get the simple points very simply, very easily. It's much, it's much easier for me to get the point across and to read the point across because it attracts attention. Our brains think, oh, we don't have to work as hard. Bullet points reveal the relationship of items, especially if your bullet points are logical and they build on each other. Bullet points support scanning. Like I said, we don't read online anymore. We, we read 25% lower, slower, and we like to scan. Bullet points are, sh are shortcuts to short key content. It gets to the point. I like to say bullet points are great ammunition pun intended, for good communication. Bullet points make key information stand out. Now, 
This, this summary of bullet points comes from Jakob Nielsen's website. His website is nngroup.com, www.nngroup.com. That's the website of the world's foremost website usability expert. Incredible website, tons of great information. I recommend you sign up for his newsletter. He didn't pay me to say that. It's great information. This fascinating study he does on website usability. At the beginning of each blog post, he even tells you how long it's going to take to read the post, too. I love that. nngroup.com. Nancy, Nancy, the word group.com. Okay, a great website uses content a 10-year-old can understand. Now, I love this. Now, please understand, this is not to insult anyone's intelligence. However, we tend to make our websites, especially the homepage, way too complicated. Now, here's the challenge and here's the test. If you have a 10-year-old son or daughter, or maybe a nephew or a niece or whatever, have them read your homepage and then ask them, does this make sense to you? Now, the point is not to insult anyone's in intelligence. However, there's what's called a, a Dr. Flesh reading skill. Dr. Flesh, F-L, E-S-C-H was an individual who developed a scale that measures the complexity of content on a grade school, junior high, high school, and college level. You want to target the content on your website for essentially a junior high level. Now, again, not to insult anybody, but some of the most brilliant content is simple. As Einstein, Einstein, as Einstein often stated, the most brilliant concepts are the most simple concepts. E equals MC squared is a very simple equation. It's complex, but the front face of it is very simple. So make sure that your content is easily understandable. It's a good challenge. It's very important. Don't over-communicate. A, a great website is simple. I know I'm emphasizing this a lot. Simplicity is actually more difficult to communicate than complexity. Complexity, we want to get all the thoughts on the page. Just brained up, brained up, brained up. I highly recommend you shoot for simplicity. Look at your homepage right now. You can probably, I can almost guarantee you can probably cut the content in half by at least 50% and still communicate the same message. Simplicity is golden. Shakespeare said, brevity is the soul of wit. Brevity is the soul of wit. If you look at Shakespeare, some of his best plays are very simple but very profound. Simplicity. Simplicity is golden. I can't emphasize it enough. Keep things simple. Visitors appreciate that. Customers appreciate that. It challenges you to look at your communication from a business model standpoint to make sure you're not confusing your customers. Now, here, uh, now, now here's an example of simplicity also. Here's another uh, former Zero Res uh, website. You can see there's not tons of content on the page. Logo, upper left-hand corner. The form fill only has about five uh, fields in it. You don't need any more than that. In fact, you can probably go with less. All you really need is first name, you really don't need last name, first name, email, phone number, and comments. People sometimes freak out if you ask for their last name. Really, the critical information you need in a, in a contact page is first name, email, and phone number. Don't overburden them with anything else. Why? Because you're going to follow up. And I mentioned that blog post that I wrote on 10 tips for following up on lead generation, on sales leads. Simple form fill. I can't em em emphasize it enough. You'll notice the, the, the phone numbers located in the middle and the bottom of the page. There's a bullet point series here. There's five bullet points. So, and, and you'll see the value proposition specializing in carpet, rug, furniture, tile, stone, mattress, and wood cleaning. No confusion. No confusion at all. Okay, simplicity is extremely valuable. A great website is fast. Your website needs to load in at least three to five seconds. Now you can go to a web you can go to a web tool called gtmetrics.com. 
You can also, if you just Google Google page speed test, you can drop in your URL and it will load your website and let you know how, how quickly the page load speed is. If your website is not loading faster than three to five seconds, you have a problem, especially with mobile devices because it takes even longer. You've got to load quickly. IBM did a major study that websites that, lo that load slower than five to eight seconds have a significant abandon rate. Well, how do you get your website to load faster? First of all, images. Most of your images are probably not compressed. Images are one of the biggest things that slow down a website. You need to run a compression tool. If you're running a, Word, a WordPress site, there's, there's a plugin called Smush. There's lots of good plugins out there that will compress your images. Images take up a lot of bandwidth. Number two, your server. Don't go out and spend the dollar, don't go out and buy the dollar 99 Wix or, or GoDaddy website package. Uh, GoDaddy's doing a much better job than they used to in the past, but you want to pay for a much faster server. I upgraded from a standard hosting, I, I use HostMonster for my hosting company. I upgraded from the standard $8 a month to the $24, $25 a month pro hosting package. Much faster server that with, with less domains. If you have a server that's moderately fast that has a thousand domains on it, it's going to slow it down uh, by definition. If you pay for a faster web hosting package that has less domains on it, more memory, faster processors, high performance server, the web page is going to load a lot faster. There's a lot of focused high performance domain companies out there, hosting companies. Speed is your mo one of your most important factors. It's one of the 250 variables Google uses to rate your website uh, domain authority and the strength of your site. Fast is good. It's worth spending the money. It creates a better user experience. Have you ever been to a website? It takes forever for it to load. I can't emphasize how important it is. Get a fast hosting package. Check how fast your website is loading. Be careful about the JavaScript that's being loading also and where it's placed. Have your web developer look at it. If you need a reference to a good web developer, let me know. I can give you a referral. JavaScript slows things down too and how the code structure is set up also. Speed is of the essence. It's the five second rule and I, I can't emphasize it enough. If you go to Google, type in page speed, um, up, uh, page speed insights for Google. You just drop in your URL and it will tell you how fast your website is loading. Take a look. A great website applies the F pattern. The F pattern is how we look at a web page. You will notice here, this is a heat map test, and you will see in the yellow and the red and yellow, you will see this is where our eyes go to first. And you can see here, we go in the shape of an F, we go to the upper left-hand corner, and we go down about 10 degrees, read left to right, then go down about another five degrees, read left to right. Jakob Nielsen was one of the individuals that, that uh, pioneered this actually tracking the heat map of where the eye goes. The study was redone about 12 years later. It was almost identical. That upper 30%, upper left-hand corner, down left to right, left to right, is very critical. Again, I can't emphasize that enough. Another tip, a great website registers its domain for five years or more. Now, registering your domain for five years or more, what does that communicate to the search engine? What do you think that communicates? Well, if we were in a live audience, some of you would be raising your hand now, and you're probably raising your brain right now and saying, it communicates commitment. It communicates that you're here for the long term. I used to reg register my domain once a year. Now I register it for a five-year period. That communicates to, to uh, the major search engines that you're in this for the long haul. You're committed to your company to your website, to your domain registration. It's a simple thing, but it's another variable Google looks at and the other search engines look at. Another tip, a great website uses an SSL certificate. Now the SSL certificate is, uh, if you don't have an SSL certificate, you'll just see HTTP and then the website URL. It's the S there. An SSL certificate stands for Secure Socket Layer. It's another variable, even if you're not running an e-commerce site that Google looks at to verify the security related to your website. 
If you go in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see a lock or an unlock device. If you see a little lock in the browser, uh, that means that it's an SSL certificate also. An SSL certificate simply means, and it's, it's very inexpensive, it's most hosting companies, it's only about 25 bucks a year. Uh, so, some even do it for free, are, are very discounted price. What that means is the connection between the user's browser and your domain is encrypted. It's secure. So it instills confidence in the user, and it also, it's a credibility factor. It's a secure connection. They're coming to your website, but you want them to feel safe. You want them to feel secure. If you don't have an SSL certificate, go out and buy one tomorrow. It's well worth it. Check with your hosting company. It's another variable that Google looks at to see if your website is credible. HTTP secure, you'll see here the little lock. HTTPS, the lock indicates that. If you hover over that and it's unlocked, often it will state this site is not secure. You want to instill confidence. Security is extremely important. Get an SSL certificate. Again, a, a great website is backed up every 24 hours. Not again, but this is another new tip. Is backed up every 24 hours. In my hosting package, I have it set up, and I pay an extra every month for this, that my website is automatically backed up every 20, 24 hours. However, I go beyond that. I, I will also occasionally download my entire website to my PC and then back it up on my four terabyte uh, uh, external hard drive. Then I'll back it up on my PC. Then I also have, uh, I have some of those offline backup tools. And so I have four layers of backup. Is that paranoid? Yes, it's paranoid. Is that, am I proud of that? Yes, I am proud that I'm paranoid about backing up. Why? Well, because if my PC blows up and my house burns down, because I have Carbonite, I have an off-site backup. So I can't emphasize how important this is in this day of, of user security, et cetera. Back things up. I could tell you some absolute horror stories of people that had incredible websites, incredible content, didn't have it backed up. Back it up. And then I say back it up. One more tip. Back it up again. What do I say again? Back it up. You get the point. Okay, a great website uses Google Analytics. Google Analytics is free. It gives you lots of great information. The code is placed on your website. If it's not on your website, have your web developer uh, place it. it. Like I said, it doesn't cost you anything. It gives you a window into the world of what's going on with your website. You don't have to look at it any day, every day. A couple, you know, a couple times a month is fine. Use Google Analytics. Uh, when you go into Google, Google Analytics, I'll give you a quick tip. Just go into uh, Acquisition, All Traffic and, and Channels. Acquisition, All Traffic and Channels in the left hand here. It will give you a breakdown of your organic, direct, social, paid search, and referral traffic. Use Google Analytics. Another tip, a great website has a blog. I cannot emphasize how important content is. Content is critical. Uh, Content drives what's, what, what many search engines think about your website. Content gives your uh, website credibility. A website that doesn't have regular, updated, fresh, dynamic content in a blog is not going to get crawled nearly as much. I increased my website traffic about 300% in about three months, about eight years ago, just by starting a blog. The first year I was able to increase the traffic about a thousand percent because I just kept blogging and blogging and blogging. So a blog is a series of dedicated articles that focused on your product, service, et cetera, on your website. If, you're, if your company manufactures uh, uh, high-end mountain bikes, you don't want to be blogging about yoga on your website. You need to be blogging on high-end uh, mountain bikes. I recommend blogging at least two to three times a month. Well, one to two times a month, at least you want to post. Ideally, the, the length of the blog post, about 500 to 1,000 words, is great. A blog is critical. It's very important. Content is king. Let me give you a quick story here. In two, this is a true story, I promise. In 2012, I wrote a, a, a blog post entitled The Product and the Toilet Seat. The reason I wrote that blog post is because one of the toilet seats failed in her home. I went to Home Depot. I had to find a toilet seat. 
There are toilet seats that are $5 a piece. There are toilet seats that are $10 a piece. There are toilet seats that play music for you. There are toilet seats that'll, that will wash you. There are plastic cheap toilet seats. There are high-end stainless steel toilet seats. There are toilet seats that range from $500 to $5. I was there in the aisle at Home Depot. I saw all the toilet seats. I took a picture and I went, that's a great idea for a blog post. So I wrote the blog, the blog post, the product, and the toilet seat. Lo and behold, the CEO of a $10 million toilet seat manufacturing company, international company, read that blog post. He went, oh, this was written for me. He read my blog for two years. He bought my first book. And in 2014, he became a six-figure client, all because of one stinking blog post. Now, I didn't want to put the lid on the issue, so I wanted to make sure I flushed it out properly. Yes, pause for the, for the pun. It just showed me the power of content. Had I not written that one blog post on the product in the toilet seat, and what it was was taking a, com a commodity product and turning it into a premium, premium product. How do you make a better, better mousetrap, et cetera? You just never know, and it showed me the power of content and blogging. It's a true story, I promise, and it helped change my business and, and helped help revolutionize my view of content. Mobile friendly, is your website mobile friendly? Your website has to be mobile responsive. More and more websites are mobile uh, friendly, but still about 30%, 25 to 30% of websites out there are not mobile friendly. By mobile friendly and mobile responsive, one, if someone comes to your website on a mobile device, it automatically scales the screen and makes it user re uh, easy to read and to absorb the content. Uh, you can, the Google has a mobile friendly test. Just, just Google mobile friendly test and you can drop in your URL and Google will tell you whether your site's mobile friendly or not. If your, if your website is, 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 is an older site, it's not mobile responsive, not mobile friendly, you're probably list, losing about 40 to potentially 50% of your potential traffic and revenue as a result of that. You need to make sure your website is mobile friendly. Can you pass the Google, Google mobile test? Well, here it is right here. You go to search.google.com slash search console mobile friendly. By the way, you will be getting a PDF of this presentation by score uh, that will be sent to you. So uh, you need to make sure you pass the Google mobile test. That's another variable Google looks at. Use heat maps. There's a heat map called Crazy Egg. Crazy Egg will actually show you where people are clicking on your page. The, the yellow and orange shows here that they tend to spend more time at the top of the page. There's a handful of good heat maps out there. You put a code in your site and it will give you information on what's happening with your website, what people are doing. A great website has single purpose landing pages. Now, single purpose landing pages, I referred to this earlier. When someone gets to a page on your site, what do you want them to do? Make a phone call, fill out a form, download a PDF, submit their email address. What do you want them to focus on? Now, how big is search? How big is search in, 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 the, in, in the AOL, the Yahoo, Yahoo, the Google, the Baidu universe? 69% of Google's revenue comes from search. And it's probably even higher than that now. Google's, what, Google's about a $65 billion company. There's 34,000 searches per second, 2 million per minute, 121 million per hour, 280 million per day, 88 billion per month. And that's not even including Yahoo and Bing. And that came from searchengineland.com. Great website, by the way, gives you a lot of good information on search marketing. Search is huge. The definition of a search engine a search engine, all it is, it's a database, and it calculates and it, and it indexes all the searches, tries to connect the dots, and make sense of them. The blinking cursor is asking that visitor a question, and you want to get that visitor from the blink, blinking cursor, point A, to point B being your website in the shortest distance. And all the things I'm talking about help them get from point A to point B in this webinar. Let me talk about search and SEO. There's two different types of search out there. There's organic, free search, and then there's paid search. Both of them are very important. People often confuse organic 
with paid search. People often say to me, because I specialize in pay-per-click advertising, well, why should I pay for, for paid ads? Because eventually everybody will find my site. That's not the case. Uh, standard SEO, SEO is very important. It's very critical. SEO is like gardening. It takes time. That free organic traffic in the middle of the page below the, below the fold is your organic traffic. It takes time for that to build at least six to 12 months if your site's set up properly, you're blogging on a regular basis, your keyword structure is properly set up. However, you're not gonna appear on the first page of Google for all your leading keywords organically. That's why we use paid search to get us to appear at the top 25% of the page within 24 to 48 hours on specific keywords. The best way to approach organic and paid search is to do them both at the same time. A lot of our clients run both quality SEO and quality pay-per-click advertising. If you need a good referral to an SEO company, let me know. As I said, we do paid search all the time. That's the focus of our business model, my agency. But both work really well together. 75% of individuals don't go to page two. The 75 percent stay on page one organically it's very difficult to appear on page one often people say well i type in my company name and i appear on page one well of course you do type in the the brand agnostic the non-branded terms that everybody's competing competing for and that's where the real kicker is it's extremely difficult to difficult to appear on page one consistently ideally if you're running both seo and paid search you're you're, you're, you're appearing at the top and in the middle, you get a double whammy of content there, which is really effective. Okay, paid search. Now, pay-per-click is the only immediate channel where users express intent with every interaction. And that's the, that's the beauty of paid search. It captures intent. Now, what are some of the benefits if, if you decide to go with pay-per-click uh, pay advertising? Now, both of these, as I said, you want to have a good website, but you've got to get traffic to the website. Just building it and they will come is not work. It takes time. It takes effort. It takes strategy. It takes multiple strategies to get the traffic to come because traffic is the name of the game, but not just any traffic, relevant specific traffic. Customers worldwide start with search engines. Often the linear journey, the customer journey starts with search engines, both organic and paid search. Paid search often drives immediate results within 24 hours as far as traffic goes. It pulls in quality paid one converting traffic, increases revenue, sales, and leads. It's very targeted. It's a smart form of advertising because you get lots of data. You get lots of good data with uh, organic traffic also. Your competitors are using paid search. It's one of the most effective advertising forms now, especially for lead generation. Pay-per-click advertising spend is controllable. You set the budget, however, you have to have an adequate budget. If you go to my website, I've got a new video that covers what is paid search and what's, well, how's it effective for lead generation. You only pay when someone clicks on your pay-per-click advertisement. Paid search is an auction and you get lots of free impressions, thousands of them. You're only charged when someone clicks on the ad, but it can be a very effective method of lead generation. Here's some things to test your site. Developers, Google.com is the page speed test that I mentioned. I mentioned gtmetrics.com for page speed test, um, crazyaid.com for the heat map, nngroup.com, Jakob Nielsen's website usability, and then builtwith.com. If you're ever curious what a website is built with, is it, is it PHP, is it WordPress, you go to builtwith.com, drop in the URL, it'll tell you uh, what, what the platform the site was developed in. Okay, are you brave? We are going to go to some live website critiques. Now, don't take this personally. It's for the brave of heart. I'm here to offend no one, but I'm going to be honest with you. So let me go into the Q&A and let me find some websites here. That Okay, here we go. The first one is Mara Campbell. Um, <laughs> Okay, truesubtitles.com. Okay, so I am going to, let me, let me bring up the browser here. Okay, hold on a minute here. Okay, so we're going into 
truesubtitles.com. I assume everyone can see. Can everyone see? Okay, oops, maybe I typed it in incorrectly. Let me make sure. Whoops, I am not spelling today. I'm sorry. Hold on. There we go. Okay. Uh, let's see. Can every can everyone see? Can you see the page? I just want to make sure it's rendering properly. No, you can't see the page. Okay, okay, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Just a second. Sorry about that. Just a minute. Okay, can you see it now? Okay. Everybody can see the page now? Still no? Someone told me yes. Okay, here, hold on here, let me. You can only see the PowerPoint, okay. Uh, wait a minute here. Just a minute. Hold on a second. Sorry about that. Let me get into the share. Mike, are you there? Oh, bummer. Okay, hold on a minute. Where is the... Okay, sorry about this, guys. Okay, just a minute here. Let me get it in there. Okay, you're only seeing... All right. Mike, are you there? Hold on, sorry about this. Still can't see it, huh? Okay. Just a minute. Fog share. Okay. Well, here's what we're going to do. I'm sorry about this. I, I don't, uh, I'm not sure if I think our host is not in here right now. Here's what I'm going to do. My apologies. Go to your, go on your screen, go to truesubtitles.com. Actually, actually go to the website yourself. My sincere apologies. Go to truesubtitles.com and I'm going to critique this. Okay, if you go to truesubtitles.com, you will see Okay, I'm looking at this for the first time. Okay, truesubtitles.com, homepage. Much more. All right, I'm confused. Much more of what? Much more of, make, do you make seats for movie theaters? Uh, now, so, so it's at the top of the fold, and on a mobile device especially, 
I'm not sure how that's going to render. I don't have time to go to it on my phone. But it, it does say, who are we? The True Sun Tiles an Argentina-based company with 16 years of experience. Okay. Now, that's a value proposition. The value proposition should be up here. There's even no logo on the left-hand side. There should also be a search bar in the upper right-hand the, the, uh, right, uh, up, right top where they can actually search for the website. So the value proposition is there. It's very long. It should be shorter to the point. It should be at the top. Uh, a lot of the, what we do, okay, um, a, a lot of this needs to be shifted to the top. Much more is so general, like I said, much more of what, all right? So uh, let's go to the next website. And once again, I apologize about the, uh, okay, we're going to go to the next one is bpandy.com, B-P-A-N-D-I.com, B-P-A-N-D-I.com. Okay, bpandy.com. First off, and it's B as in boy, P as in Paul, A and D as in David, I as in intel.com, bpandy.com. Okay, bpandy, first of all, does not utilize a SSL certificate. The SSL certificate is not there. It's not a secure, not a secure site. So that could be an issue from a credibility standpoint. The logo is in the upper left-hand corner. You can see that. Accountable, loyal, accountable, local, loyal, everything the internet isn't. I'm not sure what that means. Again, uh, accountable to what, loyal to what, everything the internet isn't for what, okay. So the tagline's a little vague, pretty vague especially. Okay, upper right-hand corner info, you got the contact information, that's good. By the way, that prior website I just contacted, no phone number. Phone number should ideally be, be in the top, middle, and, and bottom of the page. The phone number here is very small. It's kind of hard to see. Uh, it, it, it is an, an easy call icon version. That's good. Okay, so let's go to the value. We can, we can even help you with full printing service. Okay, so this appears to be a printing. We specialize in commercial offset printing. Okay, now... This is a slider bar that's scaling way too quickly. You need to slow this down. I can't read fast enough. By the time I get through halfway the text, it's actually slid to the next to the next graphic bar. So, so you, this needs to be about a 10 second scroll so I have time to read it. I would have uh, uh, and have your value proposition in the ver in the first scroll bar here. I see this on a regular basis. The slider bars are very popular now. They go way too fast. Slow it down because I don't have time and I can't read that fast and I'm a fast reader. Manufacturing, medical, and healthcare. So I'm a little confused because there's so much going on. There's, it's very busy and, and there's a lot moving. Not a bad website, but it needs some improvement on the simplicity side. Okay, let's go to, let's go to the and, and I don't believe I see a blog here, and I don't believe I saw a blog in that first website. Okay, let's go to the next website. It is called TTB, that's T is in Tom, T is in Tom, B is in boy, popup, P O P U P dot com. Let me go there. TTB, P O P U P dot com. Okay, TTPopup dot com. And it's loading, okay, T-T-B, P-O-P, okay, internal server error, that website is not loading, T-T-B, T-T-B, popup.com, uh, there's an issue, you may want to check your website, uh, something's wrong, your website is down. Let's go to the next one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do one more here. Uh, I'll do a couple more. Okay, the next, the next website, uh, it, it's, it's called internationaltalentacademy.org. Internationaltalentacademy.org. And again, I appreciate, you, appreciate those of you hanging on here. I'm so sorry. Uh, uh, the, the share is not functioning properly. So I'm going to go into international 
uh, international <clears throat> talent academy dot org. Okay, international talent academy dot org is load loading. Okay, it's taking a while here. International Talent Academy.org. Okay, error establishing database connection. Interesting. Okay, resource limit is reached. We may have a, there may be an, I've, I've got very fast internet service, so I'm not sure what the problem is. Let me try one more here. Off. Sure, I apologize, apologize international talent, uh, talent academy.org. Let's try one more. <clears throat> Offshore Marin e services.net. Offshore ma marine services.net. Offshore marine services.net. Let me see if it's going to load. Okay, this one loads. Offshore marine. Offshore Marine, as in boat, marine services, .net. Okay, this one is loading. Welcome to Offshore Marine Services. We are here to do the best surveys and to provide appropriate reports. Okay, uh, no logo, upper left-hand corner, or there is a logo, excuse me, upper left-hand corner. The phone number, it looks like an eight-point font. I can barely read it. You need to increase the size of the phone number. There's no search bar in the upper right-hand corner. An open search bar that can find information quickly. Again, your slider bar is sliding about every two to three seconds. Uh, it, it, it's very busy in that regard. Slow that thing down. It's making me dizzy. Welcome to Offshore Marine Services. Not bad. We know it's offshore. We know it's marine. Then, then underneath that, it says, we are here to do the best surveys and provide appropriate reports. What kind of surveys? What kind of reports? You, you, you have a much better opportunity to communicate a more succinct, uh, clear-cut value proposition here. Needs to be a little bit more specific. The picture indicates this is marine-based, it's water-based, could be oil industry-based. Needs to more specific, specificity. There's no benefit statement under there. You've got to learn more underneath there about us. Okay, a uh, lot, very busy here. Too much text, too much content going on. It's very busy. You could probably cut this by 50%. Okay, uh, let me do, let me do one more. I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad, a lot of you are hanging on even though the, the share wasn't functioning. Again, I sincerely apologize about that. Let me, let me do, let me do one. Okay. Um, Okay, okay, here's one, I'm gonna do one more website here. And this one is flatforks.com. Flat, F-L-A-T, forks, F-O-R-K-S, period, C-O-M. Flatforks.com. Okay, flatforks, here we go. So if you could go to flatforks.com. Flat forks, uh, level forklift loads. The new safety standard, simple, effective, affordable. All right, I'm a little confused. Level forklift loads. Do you sell forklifts? Do you provide a service that, let, I'm, I'm not sure exactly, it's related to for, forklifts. Uh, I can see a faint picture. The new safety standard, simple, effective, affordable. I'm very confused exactly what you do. There's a great opportunity here. We service, repair, and distribute forklifts from XYZ. You need to be, that value proposition needs to be at the top, simple, effective, affordable. Uh, yes, but the new safety standard in what? The new safety standard for forklifts, why is it? The value, pro it's screaming for a clear value proposition. And, a, and what is a fork, uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry, flat fork. I, I, flat fork, levels forklift loads. Okay, flat fork, 
All right, you need to define what flat fork is at the top here in a simple value proposition and what it can do to help the user. So the messaging is confusing here. There is a blog, that's great, that's fantastic. I like that. Uh, no phone number at the top. How am I gonna get a, a hold of you? There's contact us. You need a phone number, ideally top, middle, and bottom here. And uh, you do have a blog, that's good. If I go to the blog, uh, let's see, the last blog post was December 2015. Boy, you slacked off. It's been about five, five years since you posted. The search engines don't like that. You need to post at least once per month. The blog's not going to do you much good unless it's fresh, regular, dynamic content. Okay, so we're going to close things down here. It's been about an hour and 15. Now, I'm, well, I'm going to answer some questions. So let me go into the Q&A and let me answer some questions here. I'm really sorry you didn't get to see the websites. Uh, I'll make sure that doesn't happen again. It was a screen share option that we didn't enable. So I apologize for that, I really do. Let's see, okay, let me, uh, let's see. Okay, here's a question from Dawn. Don said, we just put this website up and we're working on it. Really don't know what we are doing. Okay, um, well, okay, Don, I appreciate that. You're honest. This will help you. If, need, if you need a referral to some help in that, let me know. Let me go to another question here. Uh, are you signing copies of the book? I am signing copies of the book. The two of you that do randomly win the book, of course I will sign the book, and I'll sign it with your first name there. Where, okay, where do you recommend tagline go on the web, web page? The tagline should definitely go in the top 10% of the page because you're, you want to guarantee that people are going to see that. And the tagline, the value proposition, and the benefit, that top 20, 25% is critical. Here's another question from Marty. Are some platforms better than others for SEO? Great question. These are all good questions. Marty, yes. My favorite website platform happens to be WordPress. I have a chapter in my book, Why I Love WordPress. 30 to 35% of all webs websites worldwide are, word are WordPress. It's very search engine friendly. All the major search engines love WordPress. It's an open source that has lots of great plugins. There's some 44,000 plus plugins. A plugin is like an app that all the development's done for you. My, word, my website is WordPress. Uh, uh, WordPress is one of the best platforms you can use. There are many companies like the Wall Street Journal, the NFL. There's major big enterprise companies all the way down to small businesses that use WordPress. WordPress is an excellent platform for SEO. There's other good platforms out there, but I'm, uh, uh, WordPress, you can't go wrong with WordPress. If you need a good uh, referral to a WordPress developer, let me know. I work with a lot of them. I'm not a website developer. I specialize in the paid search side of things, but I have to work with lots of website usability because once I direct client for my clients to the website, it needs to work well, but I know a lot of good WordPress developers I work with that I know and I trust. I only refer those that I know and trust. And, and most of them actually work on my work, web, uh, website for me too. Okay, here's another question from uh, Amanda. Amanda, thank you for your question. Uh, do most of these key points apply to a blog as well? Anything different that is helpful to know? Uh, a blog post, no. Uh, the, for example, the basic usability, usability of a standard website or especially the home page, a, a blog post is going to have a title and it's going to have some subtitles and get right into the content. Usability isn't as critical on a blog post page because the home page is already getting them to the blog post to begin with. Blog posts, so, so they, but you want, you want simplicity in a blog post, you want a clear title and there are ways to make sure that, that the blog, get, make sure the title is crystal clear as to what you're writing about. And number two, make sure the blog covers the title, that it's, that it's actually covering that topic. Here's a question from Bruce. I have launched a woman's accessories scarves resort where based upon, <laughs> excuse me, abstract designs found in the, in the oceans with photography about to, to, 
to Bull's uh, website. How to apply your approach today for exclusive high dam product done in Italy. Uh, uh, Bruce, I apologize. That's a big question. I'm not sure what exactly you're you're asking, it appears to be e-commerce related. Send me an email and I'll try to answer that more effectively. I'm, 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 I'm a little confused on the question. Uh, let's see, Debbie has a question. I got burned on by Yelp. How do I avoid this from happening again when I get many sales calls to enroll in paid internet advertising? Got burned, well, uh, I'm assuming that you were running paid advertising on Yelp uh i need a little bit more detail on uh on the granularity of that question uh it depends on the calls to action most lead generation you want a phone call or a form fill so uh, i'm not sure uh then enroll and pay them so it sounds like you were getting you were getting questions from people that were trying to advertise to get to, for, for you to engage on advertising advertising services rather than actual business surface services on that so you do have to some some of the platforms you have to be careful with that uh let's see let me ask answer a couple more questions uh okay okay here we go from leanne has a question my hosting renewal is coming up i'm not sure i'm with the best company who do you recommend good question leanne there's a lot of great hosting companies out there uh you can google top 10 top five hosting companies top 10 hosting companies some of it depends on your needs uh if you're doing strict e-commerce uh, i mean wordpress is using a plugin called woocommerce is great for e-commerce shopify is great for e-commerce so there's a lot of different platforms depending on what you're doing uh so and it depends on what your focus is so uh there's a lot of good hosting companies out there i use host monster i've ever host monster has been very effective for me i've had a good experience uh with them uh but but i would google the top five hosting companies top five to ten go through look at all the features the benefits see what they offer and see what what the best fit for you is uh, uh let's see and having a pro hosting package with a fast server is very important Here's, uh, let's see, here's another question from Gail. Um, let's see, uh, no, that was a website. Uh, okay, Seema has a question. What's the best way to make a website, a, to make website do it yourself, DIY? I think I know, I think what's the best do it yourself website? Uh, there's pros and cons to do it yourself website. For example, Wix, Wix.com. Uh, Wix is very easy to use. If you need to set up a website really quickly, Wix works pretty well. However, the issue with Wix is it, it, it's not the robust for SEO setup uh, like a WordPress would be. Uh, but, but um, the, you know, Wix can be very easy if you're trying to set up a do-it-yourself. Wix has a free version, but the free version is limited typically with the do-it-yourself websites. Uh, Shopify can be do-it-yourself for e-commerce. You have to pay to play. If you're going to do the do-it-yourself, go with the, uh, you know, pay some money for the, the packages that are going to give you more features. That's very important. Here's another question from Son, uh, Sonal. Uh, which website in some popular brands are good according to you? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by that. I think you're referring to hosting. So that's the hosting packages I was referring to. Uh, you may want to Google top 10 hosting packages. Call them, talk to them, look at the features and benefits. Uh, let's see, do you follow the same guy, this is from Aaron, do you follow the same guidelines for websites if the website is a blog? Uh, you, you never, it's not a good idea to have a standalone blog. It's always best to have a website and a blog is integrated as part of the website. If you have just a standalone blog, it's kind of defeating the purpose. 
having a website with a blog is going to generate a lot more free organic traffic. So you're 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 kind of fighting against yourself. So you want to have a uh, you have want to you want to have a stock standard website, but you also want to have a blog that's being updated on a regular basis. So uh, now, if you're just having a blog and you want to write about your passion, kind of depend depends on your goals and objectives. But it's always best to have a website and then a blog integrated in with that website. Uh, example in toothbrushes. I'm not sure what we mean by that question. Uh, my teeth are great. I rarely have cavities. Absolutely the best webinar from SCORE I've ever experienced. I go to a lot of webinars. Thank you, Billy. Uh, I, I'm very sorry that the websites did not show up on the sharing, So, but I appreciate that. Uh, okay. Okay. Here's, here's a question, and I'm going to close this down. I'll close it down in about five minutes. Or there's still 144 people. You guys are liking the questions. The, the page speed on my, on my website for my HTML site is 100, and my other WordPress site is 36. So uh, that I'm not sure which one you're using here that you've got some issues there. Typically, the Google page speed test and the GT metrics will give you JavaScript details as to what's wrong with the website. I would have a website developer, developer look at what it's telling you, and they can often improve the JavaScript code. Uh, you, can do, you can also run some image compression. Let's see, here's another question from Julie. Julie's asking, how is the best way to approach customers that very gently, let's see, how is the best way to approach customers that vary greatly, excuse me, going from military customers with expansion to more B2B across other industries through value proposition and benefits? I think what you're asking, Julie, is, you really have to know the number one who your target who your target visitor is. Number two, what's the persona of that customer? You need to gauge the content, the focus of the website around your target customer. Is it B to C, business to consumer? Is it B to B, business to business? You need to target the focus of the website as to who your customer is. Uh, let's see. What are your thoughts on having social media icons at the top of the website? <laughs> good question. Very good question. Uh, the issue with, oh, you have to be careful about having too much, too many items to distract someone. It's called page attention ratio. That's why often with my page search clients, we use custom landing pages. They have a much lower page attention ratio. Page attention ratio is two to one, three to one versus about 20 to one in a typical website. Now, uh, pay, you, you want to be careful about distracting someone. That's why you want to make sure that they can focus. They can focus right on what you what you're trying to accomplish. So uh, social media icons. You have to be careful about taking people off page. It, often it's better to have them at the bottom of the page. People need so so if your content is focused, your value proposition, your benefit statement is there and they can clearly understand what you're trying to communicate. And then later on, once you've communicated the message, if you want to send them to social media, that could be okay. But be careful about distracting them off to social media because your website is the foundation of your digital strategy. Your business won't survive on social media. The goal of social media is to drive traffic to your website, not the reverse. So be careful about getting a visitor to your website then immediately distracting them off to social media. Why? Because you're taking them off site and they may not come back to the website. So you want to keep it focused on your website and be careful that, that sure, social media can be an effective tool, but don't use it as a distraction tool. I would put it on the bottom. Good question. Billy has a question here. Cost. We've been on the web for a long time, just myself and husband. Costs are prohibitive for us. Crazy Egg is expensive. SSL for several websites is expensive. Hosting, we spend lots of money. 
with no results. Well, uh, I, I, I understand your pain and your frustration, Billy. Some of that could be, uh, you know, multiple factors. Uh, you want to make sure that, that I, I mean, I'd have to see the website. I'd have to see some of the issues. You may want to uh, send me an email. I could take a, you know, uh, typically I, I don't work for free, but I mean, the, apart from these seminars, I give you a lot of free advice, but I'd be willing to, to, to take a quick look at it. I, um, there's a lot to unpack there. I would need much more details about your business model. It could be systemic to what your business is, how you're communicating, and not just the website. A couple more questions, and we'll close things up here. Okay, Diane, am I being ripped off? This guy wants to charge me $5,000 for redesigning my website. Diane, that is the question of the year. Uh, I have, for typically, uh, the web development and design for a good WordPress website usually starts at about fifteen hundred dollars, uh, and it, it depends on the WordPress developer. Typically, it can range from about a thousand dollars up to fifteen thousand. However, a good standard stock simple WordPress site uh, typically is not going to cost that much, but it depends on your business. It depends on your goals are. That sounds a little in the high price range. I, I recommend you send me an email. I can give you some referrals before you pull the trigger on this developer. You want to get at least three to four proposals, and then you can compare and contrast. Send me an email at stu at atkinsmarketingsolutions.com, Diane. I'll be happy to give you some referrals, and uh, uh, so, so you can check your options before you pull the trigger on that. Okay, one more question. What is the typical price per month for SEO? Is $200 a month for three keywords okay? This is Diane asking the question. Great question, Diane. You have to be careful with SEO companies. Like any type of digital marketing agency, there's a lot of snake oil out there. I can give you referrals to some really good SEO companies. Typically, a good SEO company is going to start about in the three to five hundred dollars a month onward, depending on the number of keywords you're working with. So it really varies. Send me an email; I will give you a referral. Uh, the, the, I only refer SEO companies that I know, I trust, I, that I know and trust, and refer to clients. And you know, they refer paid search traffic to me. I refer SEO business to them. I know them. I trust them. You got to be careful. Send me an email. I'll give you some good referrals. Okay, one more question. You got great questions, by the way. I love this. There's still 134 people hanging on. You, uh, I'll uh, I'll answer a couple more. Uh, let's see. Jose, I do not need people to go to my website that much to conduct business with me. I have more activity success via social media exposure. That being said, what so site domain would you recommend using besides GoDaddy? Well, Jose, I would be careful about that strategy. Don't put all your eggs into social media. The reason being, what happens if your Facebook page inadvertently gets shut down, your Twitter, your Instagram, whatever that social media is, Shama Kabani wrote a great book entitled The Zen of Social Media Marketing. And what she said was, the goal of good digital marketing is direct all traffic to your website. If you're putting all your eggs in the social media basket and something happens to those social media sites, you've got a big problem and you're up a digital creek without a paddle. Be very careful with that strategy. Rarely do I see small businesses that are success successful just on social media. So my recommendation would be it's great you're doing well on social media, but you're probably missing a lot of opportunity off your website. Because social media, people on social media may go to your website and they get turned off by what they're seeing. So you have to make sure that you, that you increase the viability of your website. And I think you're missing some business as a result of that. Uh, so, uh, and I've already answered the hosting question. 
Uh, Billy asked the question, what about a flip book instead of the slideshow on the first page? Uh, I'm not sure. Well, I think I know what you mean. Um, websites that have the sliders, that have the fancy flipping things. In my opinion, for example, you go to my website. It's very simple. It's very much to the point at AtkinsMarketingSolutions.com. I don't have sliders. I don't have a bunch of stuff moving around. It's just quality, simple content. Boom, you get right to the page. You got to be careful about all the fancy sliding and flipping stuff. I'm not saying don't use a slider. It's kind of a trend now that people use. If you're going to use a slider, make sure the value proposition is in the slider. Make sure it's scanned slowly, not like this all the time. You just got to be careful about the flip book and how fancy it tries to get. I'd have to see it. Um, I'm using SiteGround with WooCommerce. Leanne, SiteGround is excellent. I should have mentioned it earlier. SiteGround, SiteGround is a fantastic uh, hosting company. It's very much high-end WordPress focused. Uh, it doesn't even offer email with with the hosting, but that's okay. SiteGround if, uh, is an excellent uh, WordPress uh, hosting company. Highly recommend it. It is good. Like I said, there's a lot of good good ones out there for dedicated WordPress if you're doing a lot of e-commerce, but uh, 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 SiteGround is excellent. Uh, what do I think of Bluehost? Uh, Bluehost had some issues a number of year, years back. They, are in, they have made some improvements. Uh, but again, with some of these uh, larger hosting companies, if you're going to go with them, you want to make sure you pay for a, a, a faster server. And I would, look, I would look at at least three to five hosting companies before you make a decision. Uh, uh, let's see here. Okay, we've got, um, okay, here's another question. Do you think when building a website, different developers are better for certain industries? Is there a way to interview or ask questions based, based on health insurance? Okay, <laughs> great, great, very good question. Really good question. Some web developers specialize in a vertical market. For example, some web developers only do doctors and dentists. They're in medical. Some web developers specialize in retail. Some web developers specialize in B2B, high technology. The great, really good web developers can, can make a website for just about any industry. Uh, especially with WordPress, there's, there's already um, themes that are, you can, you can purchase a premium theme and, and they can design and develop it. So if you need a referral for, for a, specific, a specific vertical industry, let me know. Uh, it depends on the capabilities of the web developer. Most of the WordPress developers I work with can work in just about any, any industry. Just like me for my pay-per-click advertising services. I can generate lead generation traffic for just about any industries. There's few industries I can't work in, but that's because I have a very broad and in-depth marketing background and understand business models. So it depends on the web developer. If you want to shoot me an email, I can probably give you a referral. But great question. Okay. Uh, all right, um, last question. You guys are ask, asking, I'm going a little long here, but that's okay. Uh, last question. If I am setting up a website and it has a login page, is it better to set up the login inside the website or create another .NET site? Would, would the inside link create more traffic than a .NET? What you're essentially, uh, it's best to go to a straight domain, and I often get the question, which is better, a .com, a .net, a .org? Well, if you're a nonprofit, a .org. If you can find the domain name that's, that's best for you, .com is recommended. However, the domain names aren't as important as they used to be. The shorter the domain name, the better. However, if, if a domain related to your product or service is shorter and you can find it in a .net versus a .com or a .biz versus a .net, that's great. But uh, d don't hyper-focus on the domain name. I, you know, shorter is better. I kind of wish my domain name was a little shorter, but that's okay. It focuses on my company name. All right. Uh, 
Can, uh, okay, one more question. Can you refer us to examples of great websites? My recommendation would be go to the Jakob Nielsen nngroup.com. He refers to a lot of good, a lot of bad websites, and he will give you a good structure. Go to my website and look at my blog post. My blogs have a lot of information. Uh, uh, my website is not perfect, but my website is very simple, to the point, easy to navigate. And I'll give you an example of, uh, I'm not trying to boast about my website, but it, it kind of depends on the focus. Is it an information focus? Is it an e-commerce focus? Is it, wh what's the focus of the website? So that's a broad question, but uh, the NN group is a really good a really good starting point too. And he's got lots of blog posts. I've got lots of blog posts on this also. And my book has a lot of good information on this too. Okay, thank you very much for attending. I really apologize for uh, not being able to bring up those websites online. You had great questions. I thank you for your patience. 123 of you are still hanging in there and I appreciate that. We're gonna close this down. Feel free to contact me, Stu, S-T-U, at AtkinsMarketingSolutions.com. Please connect with SCORE if you want free mentoring. They offer lots of great mentorship. Thanks for your time. Uh, I want to close with this. Winston Churchill said, success is not final. Fail failure is not fatal. It's the courage to continue that counts. I know we're in a tough e economic environment right now. Things are going to get better. Hang in there. Stay focused on your business, be positive, and stay healthy. Thank you very much. Bless you for coming to this seminar, and uh, feel free to connect with, connect with me. Have a fantastic week, fantastic summer, and please stay, stay positive. Thank you.